Look, stuff. That's a chair. That's a building. That's a dog. I'm not quite sure. Where did it all come from? Let's start at the beginning. If you trace back the clock 13.8 billion years, the universe eventually becomes a singularity, an infinitely dense point with a size of zero. Where did this come from? Nobody knows. That's not the point. Don't be a philosopher, be a physicist. At some point, this singularity decides that it wants to be something bigger. Literally, it suddenly expands and now there's stuff in it. What stuff? Uh, this stuff. They're like little pieces of Lego, unbreakable building blocks, and they can interact through four fundamental forces, but right now it's too hot, so currently they're just one fundamental force. The United Force! No, not that kind of united. They're united as in they all do the same thing. Right now the universe is just a big goop called a quark gluon plasma, full of particles and antiparticles. Tiny things that eliminate each other when they touch, releasing a ton of energy. What is this? But for some reason, some of the antiparticles convert themselves into regular particles, so there's some left over. At this point, it's only been a fraction of a nanosecond, but now it's cooled enough for the UNITED FORCE to split into four forces that all do different things. There's a few. GRAVITY, responsible for attracting mass to other mass. ELECTROMAGNETISM, responsible for attracting charged matter to matter of the opposite charge. STRONG INTERACTION, responsible for keeping atom nuclei together. WEAK INTERACTION, responsible for The universe is around the size of a football at this point. <laughs> Why not get bigger? So it did. And now it's several times bigger than the solar system. All in less than a second. Hang on, doesn't this break the laws of physics? Oh, no, it's fine, carry on. So now the goop is slightly less hot, and the quarks and gluons that make up the goop are starting to bind together into protons and neutrons. Ah, finally, some normal sounding particle physics. So the universe is no longer a quark gluon plasma, but it's still way too hot for anything to happen. But if you read the baking instructions, you'll know that you have to let the protons and neutrons cool for two minutes before they're ready to eat. They're ready. Now the protons and neutrons are biting into deuterium nuclei, which quickly decays into helium nuclei, which fun fact is technically a form of high energy ionizing radiation. So on the livability front, not only would you be melted beyond recognition, but you'd also be bombarded with 10 to the 50 tons of alpha radiation. So unless you want to become a plasma, best not to consider the early universe as a hot tourist destination. There's also these things called electrons that want to start hanging around the nuclei. They cause electricity and create stable atoms, but they still can't join because it's too hot. And now the universe turns off the oven. No more cooking today. Or at least for the next 20 minutes. It's only been a fifth of a school period, but in that time all of the fundamental laws of the universe have been established, and the particles have begun building themselves into a giant Lego set. But for anything else to happen, we have to wait a bit longer, roughly 18,000 years, before we can begin to see electrons joining into those helium nuclei, creating, finally, an atom! And after around 100,000 years, we can start to see some basic molecules, which are essential for life. So now the universe isn't made of high energy ionizing radiation, but it is still very hot. After around 370,000 years, electrons can finally begin to join free protons, creating hydrogen atoms. Now there's something you've got to understand about the universe before this. It was completely opaque. You couldn't see through it, and it was like a huge pile of cosmic glue. Well, after the hydrogen atoms are formed, Photons can finally pass through most of the universe, meaning that the general space becomes transparent, and you can see through it. The initial release of photons created a cool little map of light that shows the densities of the different parts of the universe, which now influences the cosmic web. Because of the expansion of the universe, this blanket of photons can still be seen today, but no longer with visible light. Rather, it's become an American household appliance. So we call it the CMB, Cosmic Microwave Background. And now we enter the Dark Ages. This was a point where barely any light was emitted in the universe for around 200,000 years. It would have just been a relatively hot cloud of light elements, much like the Australian Outback. But after 200,000 or so years, some of those clouds of dust had condensed together so tightly that they create a pocket of space where hydrogen is fused into helium, a complex environment which releases a lot of energy. I call this the Hydrogen Pressure Chamber Fusion Photosphere, also known as a star, 
And because of the lack of heavy elements, these stars would have been massive. I'm talking several times more massive than the largest stars today. And these huge stars would have collected into the first primordial galaxies, which look really weird. As stars evolve, they start producing heavy elements like oxygen, carbon, lithium, neon, bloody... All good sons... No, I'm just kidding. And of course, iron. What is this? Oh, wait, that makes the star collapse in a cataclysmic explosion because iron cannot be fused. Well, now there's a big cloud called a nebula where new stars can form again in a positive feedback loop. Stars are created, explode, and form new stars, which themselves explode, and the cycle repeats itself indefinitely, creating exotic elements like gold, uranium, platinum, silver, and many more. Now there's a table for all of them. And stars have lots of leftover debris that orbit them because they do not need that much. These little bits collect into celestial bodies, known as planets, and in one such system there is a planet forming called Earth with high quantities of water and carbon, where complex chemistry will soon emerge. Phew, oh, we've reached the present. That was a lot. There's a common thought experiment where you put all the events in the universe into a single year, and if that was so, humans would have only emerged around 8 seconds ago. The dinosaurs would have died out only around 2 minutes ago. That just shows how long the universe has been around, but mind you, that's nothing compared to the length of time it will continue to exist for. But there's a problem, we aren't sure exactly how the universe will end. But, we do have a few propositions. Three, to be exact, that all deal with the way that gravity interacts with the mysterious repulsive force that is dark energy. The first outcome is what will happen if the universe constants remain the same. In this situation, the universe will just keep on existing. After around 5 billion years, the sun will have expanded into a red giant star because it got angry that it's running out of hydrogen to fuse. It will most certainly consume Mercury, Venus, and probably Earth as well. At the same time, the nearby Andromeda galaxy will collide with our Milky Way galaxy, forming Milkometer. Catchy name, scientists. You're almost as good as Sony when it comes to naming things. After around 100 billion years, galaxies will be deprived of their most vital star-forming gases, meaning that star formation will become difficult or even impossible. And so after around a trillion years or so, all the stars in the universe will become husks of their former selves. Only three things will remain. White dwarfs. These are the remains of red giants that have lost their outer layers. They are essentially just star cores that could stay warm for hundreds of trillions of years. Neutron stars. These are the remains of really big stars that went supernova. Some of them rotate at 65% the speed of light. They are extremely magnetic and extremely destructive. Black holes. Illusions of space, time, and density. They're points in space where a singularity exists, and the black part of a black hole is actually just the point where light cannot escape from the singularity's gravity. And even these will fade given time. We aren't sure what happens to neutron stars, probably something absolutely horrifying beyond comprehension, but whatever. They have to decay at some point due to thermodynamics. As for white dwarfs, they will eventually cool down and become black dwarfs. They have almost no temperature and a very high density, and at some point very very far in the future they might explode or something, we aren't really sure. Black holes however, we are sure how they'll end, all thanks to Stephen Hawking. Essentially the universe is full of tiny little particles, creating and eliminating each other. But if this happens around a black hole, one particle could be sucked into the black hole, leaving the other without a partner to eliminate itself. So it escapes into the universe as radiation from the black hole. So yes, Black holes do radiate their mass, just very, very slowly. It could take 10 to the 106 years for a supermassive black hole to decay via Hawking radiation. But after that, that's it. All of the matter in the universe is dispersed equally into unusable energy, and nothing will ever be able to happen again. There's an argument that time doesn't really exist after this point because it's irrelevant and there's no mass in the universe anymore, but if we do consider time, then there's a chance that based on random quantum interactions, a new universe could be birthed after 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 56 years. There isn't enough storage space in the entire universe to represent this number. So just like, go try it on your calculator, it just spits back infinity. Okay, rewind. The second outcome is the Big Crunch. This is an outcome where gravity overcomes dark energy and slowly pulls everything back together. From here it's pretty much just the same as the Big Bang, but backwards. Everything condenses, clouds of matter, quark gluon plasma, incomprehensible temperatures, etc etc, and this will return the universe to the singularity of which it came. Which really makes you wonder, has this already happened? Are we in an infinite cycle? 
Eh, this isn't a philosophy video. Alright, rewind again. The third outcome is in my opinion the most interesting, the Big Rip, where dark energy overpowers gravity and rips everything apart, down to the very finest of particles. First the cosmic web would be torn apart, then the galaxies, then the solar systems, then the planets, then the atoms, okay it's pretty much just shredding. The interesting part happens when we reach quarks. Quarks are joined by gluons, which makes it really incredibly hard to separate the quarks. This is how they make protons and neutrons, but as the power of dark energy approaches infinity, the quarks do get ripped apart, releasing an extraordinary amount of energy. What is this? But then after that, no interactions between particles will ever be able to happen again. And so, that's our entire model of cosmology. Keep in mind that our current model of physics probably isn't entirely correct, and we do actually have other theories on the rise, such as- Oh, wait, no, we taught- we let her talk about quantum physics, no! The problem with our current model of particle physics is that we can't find a way to merge Einstein's theory of relativity with quantum mechanics. Both models work to describe the universe's behavior, but only on certain scales. Quantum mechanics only works on objects as small as an atom, and relativity only works on a larger scale. Not to mention, the presence of dark energy in quantum physics would disrupt the structure of some elements. So to solve this issue, a few physicists have come up with new models to describe both scales of reality. The first is loop quantum gravity, LQG, which merges the two models by developing quantum mechanics entirely from the ground up, specifically using relativity in conjunction with the standard model. Since it uses relativity, a model which is proven and has been used in recent years to find the Higgs boson, this model could be a suitable replacement for current quantum mechanics, although it still needs some development. The second model is string theory, which operates under the more radical proposition that all physical matter is actually made up of one-dimensional strings that vibrate to produce a particle. Fundamentally, we cannot prove this since these strings would be too small as to interact with any sort of force in the known universe, but the mathematical side of string theory has been unutterably reliable and serves as a damning piece of evidence towards the existence of it. However, string theory complicates the fabric of reality, as it would need 11 dimensions to actually work. We only know of three dimensional objects in our universe, excluding the particles of the standard model, which are usually considered to be two dimensional. Overall, we should accept that our current model is flawed and continue developing revisions.